Hi, my name is Kaylee, and welcome to the first episode of my podcast, where I will be rambling on about anything and everything that I find interesting. Today's topic is on Teriotopsis dernii, more commonly known as the immortal jellyfish. This jelly has earned itself the name immortal jellyfish because of its incredible abilities. Abilities which were only realized a whole 100 years after its initial discovery in the 1880s. The life cycle of this jelly starts off in the same way as many other jelly varieties. It begins as a fertilized egg. It then settles to the seafloor as a polyp, which eventually breaks into many medusas. I want to take a second and have you think about your most embarrassing moment. Wouldn't you want to turn back the clock to a younger version of yourself and start fresh? Well, this jelly has the ability to do just that thing. Obviously not when it's been embarrassed, but rather when it feels threatened, if it's starving, or if it's been injured. It's able to directly alter its cells through a process called transdifferentiation, which basically allows it to return to its polyp state and eventually once again, break into many more jellies with identical genetic makeup as the original Medusa, which is just endless regeneration, which is why it's called the immortal jellyfish. Usually when I hear the word immortal, I think of something that can't ever die, like at all. Well, that's not necessarily the case with these jellies. They are only biologically immortal, meaning they can't die of causes like old age or starvation but they can still 100% get eaten. And a lot of times that's what happens to these jellyfish. Since these medusas are just plankton and tend to kind of float there, moved primarily by currents and tides in the ocean. They don't have any goals in life, no responsibilities, just hanging out. But if they do manage to avoid being someone's lunch, these jellyfish are immortal. Now, knowing that immortality isn't just a fantasy, But a reality? Would you want to be immortal if you had the chance? Personally, I don't think I would, but it's kind of cool knowing that this phenomenon does really exist outside of books and movies. Thank you for listening. The audio and editing of this podcast was done by me, and special thanks to the American Museum of Natural History, BBC Earth, and the Real Science YouTube channel for the information I used in this video.